The Houston Texans 2023 season, they went 10 and 7, 6 and 3 at home, 4 and 4 on the road. Browns wild card game. Uh, I put in a nuclear missile whale play. Everybody was all over the Browns, and it was just the, the Cinderella story was over. Joe Flacco. I, I think I think you were on the Browns actually, and I was like, dude, no. the Texans. You I told you no, remember I remember vividly saying that. We have seen backup oh, yeah, quarterbacks yeah. have like a yeah. couple games in them where they just look elite. And then usually by the fifth game or fourth game, which this was, is when it starts to fall off a cliff. And that's yeah. exactly what we happened. were on it. We were on it. Uh, they absolutely shit, shit stomped the Browns 45 to 14. It felt like it was time for the Browns. It, it was over. Um, and yeah. then they lost to the Ravens 34 to 10. Um, some weird losses on their season last year. They lost to the Panthers. Lost the Browns, tw- lost the Browns early in the season. Lost to the Ravens twice and lost to the Jags. Um, but ultimately, the Falcons this team, lost on there too. Yeah, and the Falcons lost. Ultimately, though, this team was supposed to be one of the, slated to be one of the worst teams in the NFL, and they went from first to worst and had one of the most impressive seasons out of any football team in the league last year. And the big thing that we can thank to that is D'Amico Ryan's is a great head coach. Bobby Slowick obviously came onto the scene as a good offensive coordinator. The CJ Stroud breakout was a legitimate, crazy breakout. He was probably could have won MVP, but could have been in serious talks to the MVP if he didn't have to sit out those two games. Will Anderson breakout on defense, home run hit on those top two picks that they took last year. Um, and then Tank Dell was a great draft pick for them too in the later rounds. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, credit to them for obviously nailing the draft and nailing the head coaching hire just goes to show you how quick things can change in the NFL, where a team could be not respected and get two wins, take a quarterback, get a good head coach and the entire team just have a different type of uh, aura to them and actually be a difference maker in the league. Yeah. I mean, hitting on offensive rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year is, is crazy impressive. Um, but just the season that CJ Stroud put together was sick. I mean, he was the youngest QB to win a playoff game, most passing yards in a game for a rookie. He put up 470 against Tampa Bay and yeah. he had the most passes without an interception as a rookie. 191 straight, no interceptions. So for him. pretty impressive stuff from him. Um, Texans have a bright future with him, with him running the offense. Um, and they've obviously right now they have made all the moves to indicate that they are all in this off season. Um, yeah, they, they went, they traded for Stefan Diggs, They got to Neil Hunter, uh, added Joe Nixon, Danico Autry, Azil Zashir. Um, they added a mix of, of veterans to interject into the, uh, into their young core to kind of give them a different feel for this upcoming season. And obviously added some pretty good players as well. Yeah, they they did a great job of of bringing in the necessary talent, good and old, like young and old, while they have their while they have their rookie quarterback on on the deal that he's on. Um, you're spot on. They're they're definitely going all in. And how can you not after seeing the type of season that they put together last year? Um, like you said earlier, they went from from um, last to first. So. Uh, I think expectations are going to be pretty high this year in Houston. They have to be pretty high. I mean, like I said, everything indicates that they feel that way. I don't know. I don't know if it's fair uh, because obviously if they underperform, it's going to, it's going to look bad. And I don't even know what underperforming means for this team. And maybe we can define that right now um, because it seems like it it seems like whenever everybody is like consensus in on a team to be like that team, like the NFL's team, they always fail. It feels like, and I don't, I know that this roster is extremely talented, but it could be what I'm starting to have a feeling in my body is like, I think people are could potentially be crowning this squad maybe a little too early. That's my concern as well. If you take a look at um, their schedule last year versus the schedule this year, they played a very easy um, 
like a weak, very weak quarterback schedule last year. So the teams yeah, that they, they beat, the Buck, Saints, Kenny Pickett, they beat Will Levis <laughs> twice. They beat Derek Carr, Kyler Murray, Russ, um, Trevor Lawrence, uh, Gardner Minshew, Baker Mayfield, and then Joe Burrow. So there's a couple good names in there, obviously, but that's it's not a great list. And now they're stuck playing a first place first place roster or first place schedule sorry and things just got a whole lot more difficult the thing that sucks about the i mean pretty much the biggest downside of having a rookie quarterback play at that level his rookie year is you just sped up the timeline for the franchise and for the fan base and if you don't make it to second round of playoffs again people are gonna say what the hell happened yeah, that's but I but is do you think it's fair? Because I don't think it's fair. I know the I don't think it's fair, but like I think that. that's just what happens. I think that's yeah. just how it is. But yeah, the, and, the, the the Texans would be wrong for not bringing in all these talented guys. Yeah, and I I'm even I'm even a little questioning a little bit what they did on the offensive side of the football. They obviously traded only a seventh for Joe Mixon, but then you went and paid him. Um, I don't Joe Mixon has never really been an efficient runner. He's just been a product of being able to get a ton of touches. And that's why he's kind of relevant. Um, and I don't Great think fantasy that, running back. And I don't think anything that I saw out of the Texans run game last season indicated like adding Joe Mixon into this would like make it any better. So I don't know if I really love what they did in, at the running back spot. And then something that me and you both talked about openly already is I absolutely hate adding Stefan Diggs into this young wide receiving core. I think Nico, I think Nico Collins was on the on a big upward swing. I think Tank Dell's the real deal. You obviously have Noah Brown who played impactful snaps for them last year. And John Mechie is actually a good wide receiver. I just don't really I know that they didn't give up much to add Stefan Diggs, but it honestly makes me question how this is going to impact the development of their young, like talented wide receiving core. And I feel like that he is a guy that could mess up team chemistry really quick. Uh, two things is Stefan Diggs just gone after this year. Yeah. Isn't it just they paid they're paying him for a one year deal? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's truly not the worst situation. Um, I think they but why do did, it right? I I get it. I get it. Because if it works out, then you look phenomenal and you have Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins, and Tank Dell as your three wide three wide receivers, and that's a pretty good trio, I would say. And if it doesn't but, work out, yeah, it sucks. But you've been but down on him. You've been down on like don't like right, switch right. tunes I'm, because I, we're I'm not gonna say the that Texan. He's, You've been he's not shitting bad. on. He's not bad. He's not a bad wide receiver. Like two months. I know, and I'll say I'll continue. So to stand do that, on but Like I don't think he's a bad wide receiver at the end of the day. Like, I don't do you think? think he just do you think? Do you think side. right now? Do you think right now that adding Stefan Diggs to a young, talented core of wide receivers one messes up the chemistry of the offense and two stunts the development of two young wide receivers who are on the breakout? This is what I just said. I think if you put him in there and it works, then you look like a genius. That's not I what I'm I think there is a – I'm not done yet. I think there's a good possibility that it could mess it up. But if it doesn't, the, the outcome could be pretty but good. It, but even if it doesn't mess up, let's just say chemistry, does it all ultimately stunt the growth of their young wide receivers? Well, yeah, of no course. matter that's what, gonna, that's that's how it works. You bring yeah. in a veteran wide receiver that needs the football, and you have two guys that are just pretty much happy to be there. That sounded so disrespectful, but you get my point. Yeah. Um. It's there's gonna something is going inevitably going to happen developmental wise for those two guys. Yeah, and, and it's a then, very uh, high risk. It's a high risk situation and then from the defensive side i like the addition of daniel hunter he's obviously a little older uh danico entry suspended for six games i believe but he had a, a productive season last year and then aziz Alshir, i've said it before like he played his best football when he was with with uh D'Amico and in, in uh 49ers with the 49ers so 
yeah, I like all of those moves that they did on the defensive side of the football to add to those young guys. Like, like you have Will Anderson, you have uh, uh, Stingley, you have Jalen Petrie. Like those guys are dudes. Like on the defensive side of the football, so I love adding some more dudes on the defense for for D'Amico. Um, do you have yeah. anything else that you want to talk about the guys who maybe left this offseason or anything else that you want to talk about the additions? Um, I mean, I'm not really I think they did a great job of kind of filling in the gaps and none of these guys that necessarily left are like jumping off the page at me. I think um, they lost Jonathan Grenard. Yeah, that's the only guy that I was going to say, but I mean, they filled in the gap with Danico Autry. And they still have Will Anderson, and so like and Daniel and Daniel and Daniel Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, yeah, so like they 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 covered their 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 ground on that. So um, um, I don't know if this if I should save. I wanted to talk about just like their offensive line from last year, or if we should if I should save that moving into like for later. Yeah, I mean, I, let's just talk about like their weaknesses. I I have written down here O line health and and run game. So go ahead, whatever. Yeah. Say. Yeah. So I was reading into this and. It looks like they played a lot of 2023 without four of their five projected starters, and they pretty much had a makeshift O line throughout the season. Um, you're spot on when you said that they need to be better at running the football, but I think when you're able to get your guys back and healthy, the starters at least, I think they'll have more success doing that. And I think that'll end up making CJ Stroud's life a little bit easier. Um, strengths of this football team, obviously, like we just shit on it, but they have a great skill group. They have Sleepy Joe Mixon at running back, uh, <laughs> Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and then obviously to top it off, you have you have CJ Stroud, who's the a bright young star in the NFL. Is probably going to be good for a really long time. Yeah, yeah, nothing to add to that. Uh, question marks. I feel like that need to be addressed. Is I need. I want to continue to see this defense to ascend. I mean, obviously, we watched it have some bright spots last year, but they weren't elite by any metric. Um, I would like to see this. The young players continue to ascend, and the guys who they added through free agency uh, bring them maybe a little bit closer to the top defense that uh, D'Amico could could coach if if given the right pieces. So I do love their talent. Love, like I said, I love Will Anderson. I love Stingley. I love Jalen Petrie. I love the guys that they added this offseason. So I think that this is possible, but I feel like as of right now, it's a question mark because we need to watch it play out. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you. I'm I'm most looking forward to seeing them having to play this first play schedule now and um, really getting down to, obviously we think CJ Stroud is very good, but I want to see him play against like the big dogs and and really – prove how good he is in those instances dude can i give a cj shroud take that's it, it it's probably gonna rub people the wrong way but like this offseason in my opinion has made cj shroud like extremely unlikable like he is like sitting around with micah parsons like very too much overly, draft and stuff too overly opinionated like it, inserting his opinion too much on like players and guys on other teams and other teams across the league. Like I know that he had a really good season, but I felt like doing all of that last, like this off season was like maybe a little premature and like, I get it. He has interests outside of football. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. And like, he just only needs to play football, but just the way that he was like speaking has kind of feels like in his mind that he's like set forever. And I think that that is going to be something that like you talk about like built bulletin board material and shit like that. Like the Texans are going to have a target on their back. Like CJ Stroud uh, yeah. might be a good dude, but like he is going to have a target on his back all season and guys are going to try to make their lives hell because they're the team to beat. Everybody's talking about them this off season and they want that people are going to want to beat them. So I feel, yeah. I felt like, um, the CJ shroud like media tour this off season was like a little too premature and it could easily come back and haunt him. Like I I'm thinking about like the first bad game that he has and people are going to be like tweeting like pictures of him and doing like the sumo wrestling and shit like that. Like being like, I forgot he like, did that. <laughs> yeah. It, it was just like, very, it was just, uh, it was just a lot. So I would like to see 
him do that less i mean i know that that's probably like a i sound like a fucking old man hater like whatever but like <laughs> he was just like he was just acting like he was like fucking tom brady like oh yeah that guy's really good or like no that team's not good at all it's just like brother like you have to play these guys and like they're gonna remember that like whether you like it or not yeah yeah but i think what happens is we're so quick to crown young guys i think is what happens in, on social media i don't say i'm not going to sit here and say that you and i do that but after one good season as a young quarterback you automatically get like boosted way higher than i think you should and i feel like a lot of those times it happens when you have that week of a, like when you have a little bit softer of a schedule and and nobody's really expecting you to go out there and win nine ten games everything changes when there's a full season of tape on you when uh you go out there and you have a media tour like he did and when teams are fully prepared for what you're capable of and want to punch you in the mouth now and the expectations are higher hey baker mayfield had progressive commercials after his first first year in the nfl and i'm not i'm not saying that i'm not saying that he's going to be baker mayfield or anything like that but um i just think that uh, like we can roll into the 2024 predictions unless if you have anything else. No, no, I'm good. I just think that I don't think this team lives up to expectation. I don't know what that looks like. I, I don't think that they win. The, I don't think they're a lock to win the division. Um, We've talked about that multiple times. I think my favorite to win the division right now, and we're going to do an episode on this. I I'm probably either going to pick, I'm probably going to pick Jacksonville. Um, but ultimately, I just think that this team is the team that everybody anointed this offseason. Everybody crowned. It's a they're the they're the popular team. They're like the hipster team or whatever. And they're going to be on every single ESPN show. They're going to be on everything. Every Fox show. Everybody's going to be talking about CJ Stroud. But I think that this is just a year too early. We watched it happen with Justin Herbert like a few years ago when like everybody was like, oh, Justin Herbert's going to win MVP. This team's going to win the AFC like this, that, and the third. And they just never lived up to expectation. This like really feels like one of those situations for me. So I don't have an, uh, they won 10 games last year. I'll say they'll win eight, nine games, but ultimately I just don't think that this team lives up to expectation. And I specifically think that that's going to happen on, on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. Their wins is set at nine and a half. And I, I, feel pretty good of at putting them at nine and eight as well. I think, yeah. I mean, they had a great year last year, but I rattled off the quarterbacks that they beat. It's just not the same quarterback situation that they're going up against this year with much higher expectations and everything like that. And to win 10 games last year was insane. And for yeah. them to come out here and do it again, like it's going to be really difficult. So, so nine and eight for me. Yeah, I'm I'm right with you. So Texans, obviously the future is bright, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Had a boom year last year, but let's reel in expectations a little bit. Um, let I like I said, I just don't think that they can win this division. It's a tough division. So sorry, Texans fans. Yeah, sorry guys. White clouds blowing out when we max. Four five, not the size, but it kick up, kick up, highlight.